Since the beginning of our species, we have endeavored to comprehend the world around us. There are two methods in which we accomplish this, and every human who has ever lived has experienced both to some degree. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. In this video we will try to uncover if we can fully understand the universe. Subscribe to the channel and follow us. The first is the moment of our birth and the beginning of our education. First, we learn the most fundamental things, such as how to consume nutrients, then we crawl and explore, and finally we walk and communicate. In reality, life is a very long series of learning experiences, the purpose of which is to attain as complete an understanding of the universe as a planet-dwelling human can. However, we also accumulate knowledge. We pass on to our offspring the life lessons we learn from our parents, but we also benefit from the accumulated wisdom of thousands of years of human existence. Occasionally, this knowledge is lost, as was the case during the Dark Ages, when much of the literature of the Greco-Roman world disappeared. But ultimately, the grand act of data collection by the human species has been largely successful, to the extent that we can reconstruct some lost knowledge from the past using our modern technology. The Epicurean philosopher Philodemus of Gadara, who flourished in the first century BCE, is an example. Until relatively recently, little was known about this philosopher other than a collection of poems that had miraculously survived. Philodemus, on the other hand, had made a fateful decision that would come to define him more than 2,000 years later. After completing his studies in Athens, he moved to Rome during the Republic, before the rise of the Empire. At some point, he decided that the big metropolis was not for him, and he moved to the resort town of Herculaneum, near Pompeii and in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius. Philodemus perished long before Vesuvius' violent eruption in 79 AD, and it is possible that his library survived. Around 1752, Herculaneum excavations began unearthing carbonized papyrus documents. The discovery and excavation of these scrolls continues to the present day, with nearly 2,000 scrolls recovered to date. However thrilling that may sound, there is a problem. The volcano that conserved them rendered most of them illegible. These manuscripts were essentially reduced to carbon by the superheated pyroclastic flows of the volcano. Some, however, were at least partially readable and proved to focus significantly on the works of Philodemus, to the point where it was suspected as early as 1907 that this library, known as the Villa of the Papyri, was actually Philodemus' personal collection. Despite the fact that some of these manuscripts have been unrolled destructively over the centuries, the vast majority have remained unopened and unread. Before now, modern methods of infrared photography and other techniques have made it possible to not only reconstruct and read these previously unreadable texts, but to do so without damaging the originals or having to unroll them in their fragile state. This has revealed a great deal more of Philodemus' works that would have been lost forever otherwise. And possibly even more, it is believed that an unexcavated lower section of this library may contain any number of scrolls that could one day reveal even more forgotten Greco-Roman works. Philodemus' works indicate that the ancient Greek and Roman philosophers devoted a considerable amount of time to contemplating the existence of the universe and debating such topics as inductive reasoning and drawing conclusions about the universe. They had no idea that 2,000 years later, we would still be doing the same thing, albeit with a vastly increased knowledge base. However, this endeavor to comprehend the universe around us raises a query. Will we one day comprehend everything? Will we ever comprehend the universe in its entirety? Literally speaking, the answer is no. The universe places restrictions on what we can know, but perhaps not on what we can comprehend. This is exemplified by the fact that the interior of a black hole cannot be observed in most ways. Moreover, our knowledge is ultimately constrained by the speed of light, for instance, we cannot see a portion of the universe and never will. The reason for this is that the cumulative expansion of the universe beyond a certain distance, within which our observable universe exists, exceeds the speed of light, rendering a substantial portion of the universe permanently invisible to us. Understanding the universe, however, is not the same as knowing everything. In order to assess what we might eventually be able to comprehend about the universe, it is necessary to consider the limitations. The first significant barrier to knowledge is our capacity to measure something. In this regard, the quantum world is futile, it simply does not function on a basis where observations can be repeated. 
you are limited to working with probabilities and averages. The reason for this is the infamous quantum wave function, until a particle is observed, it exists in all possible states simultaneously. Due to the inherent unpredictability of quantum mechanics, it is possible that we will never be able to fully comprehend the quantum world, although we may attain a complete understanding of it. Or, it is possible that all current interpretations are incorrect and a new interpretation of the quantum world will clarify the situation. However, complexity does not end at the quantum level, there are phenomena in the universe that may be impossible to accurately predict. Unsurprisingly, one of these is the weather. Inaccurate weather forecasts are ultimately inaccurate because the system being investigated is too complex to calculate precisely. There are numerous examples of this, with organic chemistry being one of the most prominent. In this field, protein complexity is so overwhelming that it is extremely difficult to confront, although artificial intelligence is making inroads. Another possibility is cosmology. Perhaps the universe is simply too complex to completely comprehend. There, scientists seek and aspire for simplicity, which physicists refer to as elegance, a single small equation constituting an all-encompassing theory. However, these expectations may be dashed by a reality that is incredibly complex and even chaotic. The universe is not required to have a simple explanation. And it's not just limited to the universe. There has always been the question of what resides beyond or existed before the universe. Typically, the response has been that the query is meaningless. The universe is, was, and always will be everything, and nothing else exists. This was the case until the concept of the multiverse was introduced, suggesting that this universe may be one of many like bubbles in a bathtub. Unfortunately, it is highly unlikely that we will ever be able to measure that. It has been postulated that cold spots in the cosmic microwave background radiation may represent dents caused by collisions with other universes. However, this has never been proved. Otherwise, there is no known method for detecting another universe, as information about it is merely unavailable in our universe. It is all we can ever know, and anything outside of it or preceding it may remain eternally unknown. However, this assumes the universe is not cyclical. Roger Penrose has proposed in Cyclic Conformal Cosmology that, if this model is accurate, the universe repeats itself over and over again. It is therefore conceivable that remnants of black holes from the universe before ours could be detected in the cosmic microwave background. Nothing definitive has been observed thus far. However, there are other difficulties in interpreting the universe that we may never overcome. First, we have all two human minds employing all two human logic, which we attempt to communicate through the imprecise medium of language. This is layered with imprecision. Another Greek philosopher, Eubulides of Miletus, is credited with illustrating this idea. If you remove one particle from a pile of sand containing one million grains, the pile remains the same. Even after removing an additional 100,000, it remains a pile. However, if a pile is reduced to a single particle, is it still a pile? A type of absurd paradox supported by linguistic imprecision, but it makes an important point. How exact is language when it comes to describing the universe? Inadequate, mathematics is significantly superior but less accessible to the majority of humans. But is mathematics really trustworthy? Well, we believe so, but it is still based on axioms. Observation-based assumptions. To even begin, you must presume certain things to be true. How would you describe this to an alien or an artificially intelligent machine? It may not be possible. They may have a higher order of logic and truth, and they may attempt to respond to you with something that makes no sense to a human intellect. Consequently, is our capacity to comprehend the universe constrained by our humanity? We simply cannot say. Take cosmology, for example, we have some working theories, such as quantum mechanics and relativity, but they do not mesh together. We assume that our physics is incomplete and that there is a missing link, but it is also possible that our physical reality is incomprehensible to a human brain in the same way that an octopus, as intelligent as it is, can figure out how to drive a Chevy Malibu from Los Angeles to Chicago without crashing. We may be the cephalopod, but we're not the brightest children on the block. Consider for a moment the unsettling notion that, as humans, we span the spectrum of intelligence. We have both intelligent and less intelligent individuals. We also have specialized individuals who may be able to perform mental calculations that the majority of us cannot, but who are socially inept. 
Some individuals can be exceptionally talented and proficient in one field, but have no skills in another. Since we produce Einsteins, but the majority of us are not Einsteins and tend to be specialized in our talents and pursuits, it is reasonable to ask. Is it conceivable for a species other than Homo sapiens to have intelligence on a par with that of Homo sapiens? Could constructing a complete picture of the universe necessitate a talent that Homo sapiens do not possess by nature? Or, to put it more poignantly, are we truly the pinnacle form of intelligence ever to exist on this planet? It's possible that we like the idea, but the answer is most likely no. This topic is frequently framed in terms of superintelligence, either by augmenting the human brain to make it smarter or by creating a machine that is smarter than humans. It is possible, however, that we are merely a stepping stone for something evolving that is more intelligent than we are. This was the case for all of humanity's hominid ancestors, as each successive species evolved, they generally became more intelligent before becoming extinct. Homo erectus, if it could conceive of such a notion, might have believed it was the most intelligent species on Earth, but it would not have anticipated the emergence of the far more intelligent Homo sapiens in the future. Perhaps we're in the same predicament. And the reason we don't completely comprehend the universe is because we lack the necessary mental capacity. However, if humans continue to evolve, our potential successors may have a much greater understanding of the universe than we do. In this variation of a solution to the Fermi paradox, all civilizations perish after a very brief period of time. If you are a precursor species to something capable of establishing galaxy-spanning Kardashev Type III super-civilizations, and you cause your own extinction before you reach that point, then no Type II or Type III civilizations ever arise. There is a brief period of half-superintelligence that always leads to extinction, and in the great scheme of things, civilizations appear and disappear so quickly that they are never numerous enough to detect each other. And finally, there is the vast unknown of infinity, which, by definition, means that we will never know everything. According to mathematics, there are essentially two varieties of infinity. You can count from one to two, then three to infinity and beyond. However, it is also possible to count from 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3 to infinity. This sounds suspiciously like a semantic language issue, but infinities are ubiquitous in cosmology, whether we're discussing Big Bangs, the universe's dimensions, or black holes. Perhaps they are an artifact of mathematics and our endeavors to describe the universe and do not exist in reality. Perhaps there is a point at which mathematics becomes invalid. Almost certainly, we would need to consult a third party in order to obtain definitive information. Okay guys, this video ends here, thanks for watching everyone. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for frequent, in-depth explorations of the fascinating, strange and unknown facets of the universe we inhabit.